Well, hello everyone, this is Far Away, your guy from the best small island of Singapore, bringing you his reaction to the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Mr. Sakurai Presents, the fifth DLC character of the first Fire Pass. That's right, we finally have a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate uh, direct presentation of the fifth DLC character of the Fire Pass. Uh, we've been waiting for so long for this direct presentation to come and uh, we all thought that it was going to be revealed like last year on the Game Awards 2019 but uh, it wasn't going to be shown there and we all thought that it was going to be revealed on uh, like this month in the direct but we don't know when the this month in the Nintendo direct is going to come it's most likely it's going to come like maybe like next two weeks like near the end of January so yeah and uh, it's been like a week it's been like a week since the Pokemon direct uh, has been aired has been shown and we finally hear we finally get to know uh the fifth uh DLC character of the fire pass so uh wow it's been like a year man it's been like a year since we get our first review of the fire pass I mean it's been like a year since they revealed Joker back in the game Watch 2018 that a few months later they revealed Hero Banjo Kazooie, Terry Bogart, and now finally this. <laughs> and uh, right now I'm looking at this uh, thumbnail of the the Smash uh, Brothers uh, Ultimate Presentation himself, <laughs> itself, uh, with Sakurai holding out his hand with three fingers. He's looking at the camera and he's like three fingers. So what does this mean? Could this three fingers hinted? The fifth DLC character, maybe, and uh, I I I I've seen like a lot of people been speculating on who this fifth DLC character, and people speculate that it could be Dante because of the fact that uh, earlier this month, uh, the producer of Devil May Cry, uh, Matt Walker, uh, he tweeted out that there's gonna be like new Devil May Cry announcements. That's gonna re be revealed on three different dates, and uh, very interesting. The first date was January 16th, which is today. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm not sure if this is a cor correlation to the uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate direct presentation, but we'll see. And not only that, uh, Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition is coming out next month on February. So yeah, if this if, uh, if this hints uh, that uh, Dante is going to be in Smash Brothers, then I'll be, I'm happy for it. I'll be, ha I'll be hyped for it. So yeah, but it could mean anything. I mean, all we know Sakurai could be throwing with us. He could be like looking at the camera, like smiling, holding his hand in the three fingers. And it's like, development team, look at me. Are you looking at me right now? I mean, uh, people are going to think, all these gamers, all these uh, uh, viewers, fans of mine, going to think that I'm hinting this as a, uh, as a hint. I'm doing this as a hint to the fifth DLC character, but it's gonna be something different. <laughs> yeah, maybe he, maybe the three fingers he could mean like third party character, like third party, or oh, like three different dates. You don't know the Devil May Cry announcements, like January 16th, like today, like the January 30th, which which could possibly be that the Nintendo Direct is coming out in January 30th and February next month, February 13th. So it's like in correlation to the. Dante, the Devil May Cry 3 special uh, edition for the Switch. So maybe Dante is gonna be revealed. I mean, <laughs> could be possible. I mean, I'd be happy if Dante gets revealed. And um, I know a lot of people like wishing that Sora from Kingdom Hearts is gonna be appearing in, uh, as like a fifth DLC uh, character. I mean, I would be surprised if he makes it in. That would be historic. But you know the whole copyright issues with the Disney and all, so yeah. I mean, it will be interesting to see Sora being playable in a fighting game. And not only that, uh, Crash Bandicoot. I know a lot of people want to Crash Bandicoot because, uh, because it would be interesting to see Crash fighting against Mario and Sonic. I mean, that, that commercial, that old commercial of, uh, of a guy in a Crash costume heckling outside of the Nintendo headquarters was really hilarious. I want to see that come true, but yeah, that's uh, that uh, that's what I thought about who whoever this uh fifth DLC character really is, if what Sakurai did with this uh three fingers, 
hint he actually hint that this could be the fifth DLC character but we'll see we'll see how this goes so yeah and uh yeah um not sure about the uh the me outfits the DLC outfits and uh, new modes I don't think they're, they're gonna add new modes in this I think home run contest the final one uh, I really wish break the targets uh, they added break the targets in because that's like the only one mode that's did, did, that didn't get add in this game I mean break the targets is like a staple in the entire Super Smash Bros series right correct I mean not having break the targets in this game is like not having a, a secret ingredient in this uh in this uh, secret uh, secret recipe, so yeah, and yeah, I mean, I mean we'll see we'll see how this uh uh this direct goes. It's thirty five minutes long, so yeah, and uh, I think the previous direct was like forty five minutes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's for oh, it's starting. Okay, all right. Hello everyone, I'm Masahiro Sakurai, director of Super okay. Smash Bros. All right. from Sora Limited. All right. We'll be using today's showcase to be the first look at our okay. next right. DLC fighter. Actually, hardly anyone knows what will be yes, announced today, even among Nintendo staff oh. worldwide. The development team and other stakeholders have been working on this fighter with the utmost secrecy. Which means top other secret. Nintendo staff around the wow. world will only start making preparations for release after the showcase has been broadcast. So it won't be available right away. Please understand that it will take a little time. Wow. I think even many Nintendo employees will be surprised to see this and say, Wow, really? <laughs> Ooh. So let's all share in the fun of getting our hands on the latest information. However, even if you say, that's not the character I was picturing, I hope you don't have any hard feelings. <laughs> <laughs> we prepared a fighter reveal video. Once it starts, that's I think we'll with figure the fire out who it is pretty quickly. Now, Oh, we begin this. it right now, okay. We begin right now with the fifth DLC character. Oh! How is this? You 
Does it three weapons? <laughs> what? Why the recruits fire? Signature weapons that she that Violet get in the game, like depending on the house. Each weapon matches a direction. Oh shit! Oh my god! Oh, that's so good. You were able to go in the stage as well. The final smash. Oh my god! Oh, oh. Shit. That is awesome! Oh my god! Pile of me since Fire Emblem 3 hours! Oh my god! The game was recently like released like last year! <laughs> He's putting out the booster! <coughs> okay? <laughs> yes, there you have it. Byleth from Fire Emblem 3 oh Houses my is joining god. the battle. Fire Emblem Three Houses was released just last summer, so it's still very yes. new. Even so, you'll soon be able to play as them in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh my god! This release is planned for January Ooh, this 20th. end of the month! It's instant access if you have the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass. Oh my god! And it will also be available for purchase individually. I know people have been wanting this character, but the fact... I mean, it's nice, but not required. Things, so don't worry. <laughs> First off, what Fire is Fire Emblem? I hope people will be wanting this character. It's really hard to pronounce in Japanese. I mean, the this is this okay that we're going to get Fire Emblem. <laughs> but when like, writing, like you know, if you don't write Fire Rex and Pyro, emblem, the Fire Emblem, please come and get you. <laughs> so please be careful. Fire Emblem. Okay. The series' first entry launched in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. You could say it was a pioneer in the genre of tactical role-playing games. Oh, you might man. be wondering what makes it particularly tactical. Well, it's tactical in that it simulates combat. You can think of it as moving pieces in a board game. Or in other words, a game in which you advance units across a grid and battle. Alright. When we talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you command tanks, aircrafts, and so on. But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific character, sort of like in role-playing games. Plus, something made it stand out from other Nintendo products. Characters could permanently die. <laughs> yeah, That's pretty I really hate that, uh, man. So perhaps difficulty. we should just say they're sleeping with the fishes. Oh, yeah, I know. The but really, if a character fell in battle, you'd lose that unit. They'd be gone, and you couldn't use them again. Yeah, there's something that you need to avoid. Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you. But a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. In the older games, your units would really be gone, never to be mentioned again. Scary. The game's stories are told like chronicles of war, with increasingly distinct characters and engrossing scenarios. Several characters also appear in the Super Smash Bros. series, and six of the seven can use a counterattack. It's their down special. There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First comes your opponent's turn. They attack, and you counter. Next comes your turn. Oh, okay, that's very really interesting. Okay, alright. And now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is the 17th game in the series. 17 games. People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that Oh yeah, games. there's there are some games not released in the Well, if you well. include Fire Emblem Heroes in the remakes, but you don't include the Satellaview game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Sharp FE, and Fire Emblem Warriors, then it comes out to 17 games. Let's oh. try saying them in the Fire Emblem Can You Say It Challenge. Oh, that's good. I'll give it a try. <laughs> Oh, is he? 
宝生の謎、先生の系譜、トラキアナナナナ、僕、えー、封印の剣、オーケーオーケーセクライス、セーマの宝石、荘園の奇跡、暁の女神、Oh, I love reading Dawn. I played that game as well in the, in the Wii. Awakening. Oh. There you go. 17. Oh! And there's the tree! The three fingers! No wonder! So, tree houses! No wonder. This is zero. Okay. Fold this here and you get one. And okay. then you get two. Two. And then two plus one equals three. So, okay. this will be four, five, okay. six, seven, and eight. <laughs> And then you get 16. Add one and you get 17. Wow. Okay, all right. Awesome, isn't it? <laughs> that's, okay, that's very interesting. You can actually count up to 31 on one hand. And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1023. Wow. If you've given up counting the knots in the tatami mat, you could always give it a go. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I might as well try. What is Fire Emblem Three Houses? Oh, the main team of the, the, Japanese, the song. The male version of the main character is called Bereto, and the female version is called Bereto. But in English, Bereto. they share the same name Bereto. with Violet. Bereto. Violet becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic houses. Once oh. you've chosen a house, you guide them through their school life, and, well, you end up fighting the other houses. After a certain incident, Very five years pass, and you meet up with your grown-up students to battle against the other houses in their regions. It's a very sad game in which your former allies become enemies, turn hostile, and try to kill you. Oh. To understand the concept of Fire Emblem Three Houses, I played an early version of the game before its release. We need to experience I've this game. I've done the same thing before, bought the game with by The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example. Because I couldn't wait until launch to experience it, or we'd have never made it in time. For that title, I borrowed an early version of the game for two days, ran around all the areas, saw the ending, and realized for the first time, hmm, I guess we can't really have Breath of the Wild's Princess Zelda as a fighter. I did the same this time, but with there being three houses and multiple endings, it was really hard to get a feel for it. Oh, okay, there's a multiple endings in three houses. And of All course, right. there weren't any walkthroughs I could reference. Wow. We need to try three houses. The game has multiple routes, and the outcome of each is very different. Your experience will vary depending on the route you choose, and many of the characters you meet will adopt different roles in the story. I'll try to avoid spoilers when I'm talking about the fighter. I hope you'll Oh, understand. thank God, thank God. Thank Before you. For my demonstration, I should point out that when I did the Terry Bogard showcase video, I mentioned that it was recorded a month in advance. Okay. But this time, we have to account for the holidays and such, so we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. Oh. Right now, it's actually November. Oh. Therefore, some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. Okay. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera and such for demonstration purposes. Here we go. Alright. Let's see how this fire works in battle. In the matches. So, this is our new fighter, Violet. The female Sadly, and the male. they're lacking in mobility. It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Okay, Throws are not their strong point either. Their grab lacks range. But actually, you could say that they're distance demon. Whoa. The hero's relic they use changes depending on the direction you input with the stick. Each of the hero's relics is a weapon that appears in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, it's a they hero like eggs. Bones, okay. And there's a reason for that. A weapon's from First, let's talk about the weapon Byleth uses for upward inputs, the Sword of the Creator. The Sword of the Creator here is Byleth's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks, where it takes the form of a whip. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For their up smash attack, they whip the sword upward to launch enemies in the air. For their up air attack, they'll wave the whip sword overhead. The hit detection for this attack lasts for a relatively long time. Oh, try this repeatedly. Okay. The up special move is really something. The sword extends like this, allowing you to do things like this. 
Oh, this goes wrong. It was pretty terrifying how I knocked him into the air with that attack. And in addition... Oh! You can do oh. awful things like this. That said, you'll launch tricky, opponents dude. upward until their damage reaches a certain percentage. Exceed that percentage and you'll need to be careful. You may find it helpful to mid-air dodge. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. Hey, that's, so that's, that's, that's the up cool. special. That's really now, cool. for the sideways inputs. This is Erdvar, the same name as the weapon from Celtic mythology. First, we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can see, they have it's a long reach. Oh, yeah. Like so. Marth's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? If Byleth does the same thing, you'd win out, so you should be able to beat it. Next, the side smash attack. Side smash. This also has a long range. It'll connect even from here. Oh, that's good. Long range attack. Also, if you add an upward tilt, it. it will be stronger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you've knocked an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for them. By the way, the tip of the lance is more powerful. The shaft part is weaker. Okay. So it's not suited to close combat. It won't deal much damage. Well, it will deal little damage when you close to uh, when you close to the opponent. So that's why you distance rule, yourself. You want to hit with the blade part aimed upward or downward in this case. Okay, that's very interesting. Next, the side special move. Now we swing with extreme reach. Byleth will simply swing the lance like this, but again, it has excellent reach. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Oh, that is cool. Actually, you can do a smash attack to charge forward a little. Like this. Okay, alright. That's good. But as you'd expect, it can be easily shielded, oh, so be okay. careful. It could be a problem. Use it in mid-air and you'll carve up a large area. Returning to the side air attacks from earlier, they have great horizontal reach, but they lack verticality. But that will be very good. That, 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 so uh, this complements it well. That will be very good against like uh, you'll be 100... Uh, you now, for the downward inputs. For these, Byleth will use an axe called Emir. Emir, okay. It's named after a weapon that appears in Ugaritic myth. And it could be, uh, it could be useful in like, endless battles. It really is strong. You can try for a meager attack. Oh, that spike! Wow. Next is the down smash attack. A heavy swing of the axe back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. And for the down special. Violet channels all their energy into a devastating strike. It's a bold move, similar to the Falcon Punch, but here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect. Oh yeah, super armor, okay. Which allows you to withstand an attack. Oh, that's good. Just so you know, if you execute a Falcon Punch at about the same time... Oh! It's a bit slower than the Falcon Punch, but due to the super armor effect, you have the advantage. Wow! Unless you get grabbed. <laughs> Another notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can breeze past platforms like this to reach a lower area. Oh, that's really cool. It won't let you jump, cool. but you could use it as that's a surprise attack. That's what I'm just surprised attack, okay. It's gonna do this one also, from the bird with the opponent from below. The swing takes a while, so if an opponent runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. Okay, so you can turn and left and right. Even though it can be hard to land a hit with this move, it can be really effective when oh, used against a group of opponents. Wow. Yeah. Plus, even if you fail to land a direct hit, any opponents on the ground nearby will still be launched a little. It's as if the quaking of the ground launches them. 
By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. Yes? I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from the Fire Emblem series, because you'll just get loads of counters. Oh, yeah. It hits with that much power in a single attack. Yeah, it, it, counters can actually counter multiply attacks. the power of blocked attacks. And using easily anticipated attacks like this, you just get you hit by counter after counter. Yeah, because the movement is very slow, you can easily Next, count. we have the neutral moves. The bow you use is called Fail Knot, which shares its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. It only appears in a few neutral moves. You've got the neutral air attack. This attack is similar to a move of Pits and other fighters like him. It lets you spin the weapon around. I really like he, they, <coughs> like, he has different attacks for each weapon. That's it. cool. And with the neutral special, you'll let loose an arrow. Right. It seems pretty straightforward, right? But there are a few noteworthy aspects to this bow. First, the biggest difference between this bow and Link's is that once you enter the command, you can keep charging until it's ready. Oh! You can't okay. release it partway through the charge, so when it does fire, the arrow travels at high speed. Oh, it's okay, also so you very need to powerful. Hold, uh, that said, you can still sure cancel that out the of the stance using the shield button. Oh, you can cancel. Okay, that's good. You can also change direction while in the stance. It works up until this point, but if you keep holding the button, you unleash. Ooh! Arrow that looks like a beam of light. Oh, that's cool. You can perform this move by that's keeping awesome. the button held down. You charge up power like so. Charge a bit more and then fire. But again, you'll need to take care when using this move. For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. Oh, Not even with the shield button. In other words, you're committed to fire him. Okay, so, so there's no see, way you can cancel a situation like this is pretty terrible. Ah! Once you've entered the stand... You yeah, you can, you can cancel out the attack, so yeah. Which means it's quite the risky attack to use against fighters who have a move with a reflective Yeah, you can use it, the but attack can always just aim read. into the fray, as it is, after all, a yeah, you can tell. Move, letting you deal a sudden blow to opponents. So, you need to think carefully when using this projectile weapon. By this final smash is called Progenitor God Ruptured Heaven. Progenitor God Ruptured Heaven. Ruptured Heaven. This is an enhanced version. <laughs> That's cool. That's a cool final smash. As you can see, we team up with the mysterious Sophis and launch an attack together. Sophis. Oh. Is she? Is she like the like the like uh, a guidance like sort of like guidance now, to Violet in the variations. game? It's set up so that the default and odd numbered color variations are male, while the even numbered ones are female. However, the third, fourth, oh, and fifth wow. are see, reminiscent of the house leaders. Okay. Those of you who played that's, the original that's game cool. will of course understand what I'm referring to. Oh, that's cool. The sixth color is based on Sophis, who you just saw earlier. Okay. And the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on based on something that occurs in the course of the original game's story. Okay, okay. Alright. I find it uh, for myself. Passage. Right. I'm actually glad Sakurai uh, <laughs> uh, refrained from uh, spoiling the rest of the plot of uh, Final Fantasy III Houses because Next, I haven't I'll played the game the yet, so for this really one, it's really interesting for me to, to see the how the story is. Spend most of the game, Garrick Mock Monastery. With the new stage, the Monastery. This is how Garrick Mock Monastery is laid out in the original game. From these, we chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, Bridge and Cathedral, all in one stage. Wow. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me introduce each of the guests that appear in these four areas. The first area is the marketplace. I think this is where a lot of people come to do their shopping. The guests that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's House, Blue Lion House. Dimitri, Dedu, and Ingrid. Is the house leader Not of the, uh, Dimitri, the Blue House, right? Dudu, or Ingrid. Their names are a bit difficult to say. They're largely Dimitri. from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Since it's a Ingrid. kingdom, that means they have a monarchy. For that reason, I guess you could say Dimitri is the future king. He had quite a difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. 
He's an unfortunate one, that one. There are vendors on either side. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things, but... We can destroy... Uh, here you can break them. The booths. If you do break them, the stage will expand to the left and right. Oh, okay. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. <laughs> and in the background, you can see the gatekeeper. You often pass through this area and fire in the three houses, and you end up talking to them a lot. Moving through these areas is possible thanks to this oh, mysterious cool. platform. Just when it seems like you've come to a stop, oh. you'll come crashing back down. You've broken through the ceiling and slammed into the building. The Black the Eagle. The I've hall, seen this girl a lot Yard, in Twitter. And Petra of the the Black Fanat. Edelgard. It's not spelled Edelgard. They're from the Adresian Empire. And as such, they embrace their military might. Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some terrible ordeals. You'll notice there are she prominent cool. chandeliers on the stage. Got. It's possible to knock them down. See fan has of her. A lot of people <laughs> like Drew. However, fighters can't actually her reach in, uh, it. Her in social media is stage. Twitter. You can reach it with other fighters though. So, it's nice if you can work your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up, or perhaps by using another fighter as a stepping stone. Wow. There we go. I made it. Oh. Yeah, you can knock it down. Also, you can break this table. Like so. Just like the sign that reads Fuding Kaza in the Suzaku Castle stage, it can break if you launch the opponent into it at close range. There's another area. The bridge. The camera rotates 90 degrees, creating this long area. It's very wide indeed. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's similar to the bridge of Elden Stage. Oh yeah, the, the golden deer, the, the yellow one, right? Claude, yeah, cool. Hilda, and Lawrence. They belong to the I also seen the of this character, so... Because it's an alliance of many noble families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth title in the Fire Emblem series. Hmm. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. The naming process must be tough. Hey, it looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. As for the bridge's design, it's just a long pathway, plain and simple. You can expect plenty of blows to be exchanged at the edges of the screen. You could also say it's a place where the fail not really shines, and in this sense, I think it suits the Golden Deer perfectly. It's just spot to another area. Okay, alright. The last area is the cathedral. Only with some platforms you can pass through. Oh. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Seteth, Flane, and Rhea. There's Seteth, who appears to have an extremely strong bond with his sister, Flane. She seems to be under the protection of him and Rhea, who you can see fighting during the opening of Fire Emblem Three Houses. All three have character quirks related to their true identities. I feel that Flane might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. This is a simple area of the stage. All it has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. It'll cycle through each location in about two and a half minutes. Okay, we're going to see him in action. Okay. Okay. They will have a tag team wow. battle in squad strike with the DLC team pitted against. Oh, okay, all right, great right team. That'll I guess give us the blue team. Five players per side. All right, here we go, Joker. Joker! What? <laughs> and hero! What the hell? Gee, we really made a lot, huh? Oh yeah, oh, oh I see. <laughs> He's killing all the characters so that you can demonstrate. But basically, I'm trying to defeat all five opponents with just the professor here. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hand on. Oh, so it's one against five. It's not going to land that easily. Oh, this is bad. Ben. That's bad again. I better keep my distance. I'll use this chance to attack. Got it. That's scary. He's invincible for a moment here. Lots of explosives. Ouch. What a perfect shield of that, huh? Good one. He's using the arrow and he's using this, like this, or like so. No anti air, huh? Oh, yeah, okay, that's there. good. The soccer ball connected. Two down, three to go. Good. Brain. There's mom. You're in a good spot, mom. <laughs> There's Galaga. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter if Gardevoir's there or not. Come on, get a smash ball! I feel like the enemy might get this smash ball. Uh... See, they got it. But I mustn't give up. I can't waste the chance. Oh. There's another smash ball. Yes, got it. All right. Now, what are you charging up for? There's still more. Come on. What? Go on. You can take Come on, use the hammer. It's You're right. Although I'm scared I might get hit with a counter in this state. Oh, God. Yeah! I was trying to fight using Vilas abilities alone, but what matters is that I won. Good game. It can be fun to play like this, especially in tag team, so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. Okay. The end. <laughs> that's good, that's a, that's a great match, by the way. Song collection, okay. Now, about the additional music. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire Emblem stages. There are already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. Our selection this time has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. So the one this time is the new arrangement. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both yeah. Japanese and English. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. Interesting. Okay, alright. We're also adding in a new spirit board. Oh. It includes oh. the house leaders among some of the other popular characters. So this is oh, Legend Class. So she's a legend. Oh, okay. Also, there's a new classic mode route, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages from throughout the series history. The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand, but you'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. What? Now okay. for the Mii Fighter costumes. Please take a look. Oh, okay. Mii Fighter costumes. <coughs> Mr. Mii Fighter's costume round 5. Okay, let's see what they have in store. Rabbits, oh! Oh, God! Oh! Okay! Alright! Look at my X! Oh, X! Alright, for good, for Ghana! Okay! Save for the garden. Okay, all right. So we're gonna get all these variations of the garden costume. Whoa! What? Oh! Oh! No! <coughs> Yo! No! Yo! What? Yo! What is it? Like it is a sense. Yo!
This time, we're releasing a Cuphead costume. And for those of you who purchased the Cuphead costume, an additional song will be added. It's called Floral Fury, and it's the theme that plays when fighting Cag the Yeah, he's fighting against it, that... I hope you that enjoy flower boss. Well. After purchasing a costume, I recommend using the sharing feature. Share content? If someone has created a Mi Fighter, you can play using the costume it's wearing immediately after you download it. And now, on to the amiibo. Oh. Oh, okay. So Richter the and Dark Samus Dark amiibo. Samus is pretty good, doesn't it's it? amiibo. Oh, Dark Samus and Richter are planned for release on Friday, January 17th. <laughs> And now, with the addition of Violet, the fighter's pass is finally complete. The lineup was Joker, Hero, it's kind Banjo, of weird. Kazooie, Do we have Banjo Bogart, Kazooie, but the rest of them are humans. From more than 70 fighters, only 5 have been added. But I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. Oh. There really were a lot of new mechanics right, for yeah. there. Yeah, they, you, you guys I have added, added all those new fighters, mechanics. We don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. Yeah, we have the patches as, as well. I really, I really need to get back As to I Super stated, Smash Bros. We'll continue to release more DLC about that future Don Buckle Day, okay. I had thought that one or two might suffice, but well, have a look. A sneak peek? Okay, alright, even more fighters to development, yes, we know. Five more! What, six more? Six? Okay! Looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. <laughs> okay. For this reason, we will be releasing the Super oh Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2. It will be available for pre-purchase on the date shown, so please keep an eye out. And now that it's official, we intend to move ahead with development. Of course, like last time, the contents will remain unknown for now. And I'm uh, personally very so sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 this when the details are yet to be revealed. And they are coming on. Right. Like last time, I'd be very grateful if, despite that, you would understand why and purchase it. Yes, Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. So they, they already decide on the regarding potential characters on Twitter. I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. Ah. Oh. But I still hope you'll look forward to it. Okay, I have been expecting more from you, Sakurai. Fighters Pass Volume Two. Last time, it was a Rex costume. But this time, okay. here's what we have. Oh no. Oh! It's a Mii Fighter costume from wow. Mii Sword Force, The ancient soldier gear from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Okay! Alright! This will not be for sale individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighter's Pass Volume 2. That's cool. It's been reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game it in the world. It is. One of the best fighting games of the year, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. Is it a fighting game? Seems like Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. Amazing. However, I'm not sure if this is accurate. There were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if we really want to get into the weeds. Yeah, Plus, yeah, there's the arcade like versions, versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. Also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, who knows? But when it comes to a single piece of software, it seems like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. Although, I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. <laughs> I feel like it's become more than a fighting game. Some sort of yeah. celebration of gaming or something else entirely. It's a celebration of all the characters fighting together, man. Also, For other universe. I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC fighters. Aww. 
The first Fighter's Pass just wrapped up, but it was decided that there would be more DLC. Which means, no breaks for me. I'm sure, I'm sure you will have a break after the season pass too. I really That's hope it. this guy Thank you. gets a vacation. Hey, take care, take care, Sakurai. Wow. Wow, and that's it! Wow, okay, alright! Wow! So that's... That is the... Uh... <sighs> the fifth DLC character of the Fire Pass in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And it's revealed to be Byla from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I think that... I think no one expect that character to be added as a fifth DLC character because uh the game that character was was in was like released last summer last year so he's a, he's, he's a brand new character but this could also mean that there's still hope for <sighs> for the other characters there will be a uh, a reveal uh, throughout, uh, throughout the upcoming months for the Season Pass Volume 2 for the Fire Pass Volume 2 of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate so yeah and oh my god I really didn't expect that uh, <laughs> me outfit Cuphead is is a me outfit for Gunner and it got the, its additional track That's li that is Cuphead right there man that is actually Cuphead himself just like they did with Sans Oh my god, wow. So in a way, Cuphead is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, so... I mean, I should be happy about it, but... Man, I wish it could be its own character, but at least Cuphead is in, so yeah, I mean... I did say that uh, Cuphead might be, might be in the next season Fire Pass, but... Oh well, it's a me outfit, so yeah. Oh man, so... That means uh, we have a total of six characters. They're gonna reveal six characters in the season two, uh, vo uh, in the Fire Pass, uh, season two or volume two, or you like to call it. And they're not gonna do reveal until the upcoming months. So yeah, I thought they're gonna like tease us a bit, but at least we finally get like a total of six characters. So yeah, and. Wow, man. I have yet to play Fire Emblem Three Houses. Even though I have bought the game, I haven't experienced it yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Sakura didn't like reveal like uh, the amount of spoilers in the game, like refrain from spoiling us the the the, the, the story and the, uh, of the game itself. So I, I really thank I got to thank Sakura for refrain from uh, for talking about the the story, the like the major plot points of uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses because I, I haven't experienced the game yet. But now. Uh, it got me intrigued into uh, playing the game <laughs> right now because uh, it won for the best like tactical game back in the uh, the game awards and uh, also the fan as well so yep yeah. oh man so yeah I really can't wait uh, to experience uh, Fire Emblem 3 hours and why not looks like a very cool character so, uh, he or she like depending on the uh, the gender that you're gonna use in in the uh in Smash Bros Ultimate, so yeah, and I really like the fact that uh, like for the we for the weapon that uh, this character choose that this character uses, it like you it has like different attacks, different uh, side attack, different smash attack, so yeah, and uh, area attack as well, and different combos and moves that you can do along your pull off, and I really like the stage as well and the uh, background and uh, NPCs. So yeah, I really, I really enjoy, I really enjoy this, uh, this direct. And a uh, total of 11 songs gonna be added uh, in this. Total of 11 Fire Emblem songs. So yeah, it's very interesting, very interesting. And uh, man, Dante didn't get revealed. <laughs> People were expecting Dante to get revealed and Sora to get revealed as well. But... Um, there's still hope. There is still hope uh, for uh, the Volume 2 
of the Fire Pass. It's for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate because they have a total of six characters, and uh, it seems that uh, they, uh, Sakurai and the development team has already, have already decided on who the characters are uh, gonna be. Uh, Nintendo already decided who the characters gonna be in the season uh, two uh, of the Fire Pass of Fire Pass Volume Two. So yeah, and I really can't wait for it. So yeah, so the first Fire Pass is finally complete. Joker. Hero slash Eleven, Banjo Kazooie, Terry Bogart, and Byleth. Which I find it very unusual because uh, this fire pass, all four humans and one <laughs> animal character, <laughs> and, and, uh, and a bird. <laughs> you have four human characters and a bear and a bird in the first fire pass. So. Fire Pass Volume 2 is going to be very interesting, so I really can't wait. I really can't wait to find out in the upcoming months for uh, for whoever the uh, the first character is going to be revealed from uh, uh, Fire Pass Volume 2. So yeah, I really can't wait for it. So yeah, I really enjoy this direct, and I really like I really hyped for for Byleth. And it's, it's been such a long time since I haven't played the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The the the. The recent video that I did was the Joker one, right? Yeah, it's the Joker one, and I really, I already have uh, recorded the uh, Robin and, and Ness. It's been recorded like last year, but I've yet to upload it. So yeah, oh man, I'm missing out a lot. <laughs> I'm really missing out a lot. So yeah, yeah, I really, I really am, am hyped for Byleth for Fire Emblem Three Houses, and yeah, I really can't wait. What uh the future of Super Smash Bros Ultimate have in store? For me, and I really hope that after all of this is over, Sakurai can finally take a long rest vacation. This guy really needs to take a break. Really needs a vacation. So yeah, Sakurai, you really did a a great job. Uh, making this game for us along you and along with uh with the development team. So yeah, so yeah, that's my uh reaction and thoughts to the uh the fifth DLC character. That has been revealed from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Mr. Sakurai presents Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. And not only that, a total of six characters are going to be in uh, Fire Pass Volume 2. And of course, the DLC outfits. Oh, <laughs> I'll tap from Assassin's Creed. And uh, oh man. Mega Man versions of Mega Man uh, costumes and the cup head, <laughs> cup head, SOB outfit. But it's okay. That's okay. I'm happy. I'm happy for it. So yeah, and uh, yeah, that's my reaction and thoughts to the uh, the direct itself. So uh, if you guys enjoy my reaction and thoughts, uh, give it a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you want to enjoy for uh, more videos from me, and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you can get uh, notified by each videos that I upload to my channel. And until the next video, this is far away. Signing off. Keep in touch and have a good day. See you guys.